Hi there, and welcome to this lesson on Pure Mathematics 3. And in this lesson, we're looking at how you can do some integrations by using the reverse chain rule. Okay, in a previous lesson, we learned the following. We learned that if you differentiate log x, you get 1 over x. And then using the chain rule, if you differentiate the log of some function of x, then first of all, you differentiate the log to get 1 over f of x, and then differentiating the f of x gives you f dashed of x. So that means that if you differentiate the log of f of x, you get a fraction. But it's a very particular type of fraction. On the bottom, you have a function. On the top, you have the differential of that function. What that means is that if you ever see a question where you have to integrate a fraction, where the bottom is a function, and the top is the differential of that function, you can always integrate it just by saying that the answer will be the log of the function on the denominator, on the bottom of the fraction, plus a constant. Okay, let's have a look at how this works out in practice. Let's say you had to find the integral of 5 over 5x minus 8. And the significant thing here is 5x8 minus 8 is the function on the bottom. And if I differentiate 5x minus 8, I get the top. I get 5. Okay, I'll let you have a go at finishing this off. Pause the video, have a go, and come back to me when you're ready. Okay, surprisingly little is going on in this question. The moment you notice that the top is the exact differential of the bottom, you can immediately write down the answer. It's the log of the function on the bottom plus c. So the answer will just be the log of 5x minus 8 plus c. And if I differentiated that, I get 1 over 5x minus 8 times by 5 when I differentiate the 5x, which would give me the question. Example 2 is very similar. Again, if you look at the bottom, x squared plus 5x, if I differentiate that, I get the top, 2x plus 5. Okay, have a go at finishing this one off. Pause the video. Come back to me when you're ready. Again, you can go straight to the answer on this. Because the top is the exact differential of the bottom, you can immediately write down the answer, which is the log of x squared plus 5x plus c. And if I differentiated this, then I would get that for the answer. Example 3 requires a little bit more work. If you differentiate x cubed, you get 3x squared. So if I differentiate the bottom, I do get the top, except for a constant that I need to multiply by. Now, you frequently get questions like this, where the differential of the top, uh, the bottom, is basically the top, except for the multiplication or division of some constant. So a little adjustment will need to be made. I'll let you have a go at working this out. Pause the video. Come back to me when you're ready. OK, let's have a look. Well, we start off by saying, let's try y equals the log of x cubed. And then differentiate it and see how it goes. So if y equals the log of x cubed, the log of the function on the bottom, if I differentiate that, I'll get 1 over x cubed. And then differentiating the x cubed, I get 3x squared. So that'll give me 3x squared over x cubed. Now, you always need to think with these things, how would I actually get from here back to the question? Well, I need to divide by 3. So rather than having y equals log x cubed as the integral, I'll need to divide that by 3. So the integral will be y equals a third log x cubed plus c. And I if I differentiate that, I would get this here, but I'd also get the third. And the 3 and the third cancel each other out, and I'd just get x squared over x cubed. Okay, example four. Again, the significant thing to notice is that if you differentiate the bottom, you get the top. So if I differentiate sec x, I get sec x tan x. Differentiate the 10, I get zero. There's a constant, which is going to be a little bit of an issue. But as before, you can solve that issue as you work your way through the question. So I'll let you have a go at this, pause the video, come back to me when you're ready. Okay, it's always the same. If the top is basically the differential of the bottom, you start off by saying, well, let's try the log of whatever function is on the bottom. So in this case, that's the log 
of sec x plus 10. And then what I do is very quickly differentiate this to see whether we get the answer or an adjustment needs to be made. Now, if I differentiate this, differentiating the log gives me 1 over sec x plus 10, and differentiating the sec x gives me sec x tan x, differentiating the 10 gives me 0. So that would give me sec x tan x over sec x plus 10. Now, that's what I've got. What I would like to get is 4 sec x tan x over sec x plus 10. That means I need to multiply this integral by 4. So the integral will be 4 times by the log of sec x plus 10 plus some constant. Now, similarly, using the chain rule, if we differentiate a function which has the form f of x to the power of n plus 1, when we use the chain rule, first of all, we differentiate the n plus 1. So you'll get n plus 1 come down to the front. The power of f of x will go down from n plus 1 to n. And then using the chain rule, you also need to differentiate f of x. So you'll get this f dashed of x. What this means is, if we have something of this form, some constant times by some function to the power of n multiplied by the differential of that function, then we can integrate it. And when we integrate it, we'll go back to f of x to the power of n plus 1, where some adjustment of the constant may well be necessary, as on the previous questions. OK, it's a little bit more confusing, this, but I'll let you have a go at an example. So example 5. Find the integral of 2x minus 3 times by the square root of x squared minus 3x plus 4. The significant thing to notice is we've got a function here, square root. Inside that function is x squared minus 3x plus 4. And if I differentiate x squared minus 3x plus 4, I get 2x minus 3. That means the integral has this form, where I have some function to a power. In this case, the power will be a half times by the differential of that function inside the square root, times by some constant. OK, I'll let you have a go at this question. Pause the video, have a go, and come back to me when you're ready. OK, let's have a look. Now, as I was implying just now, if you ever have square root or something like that, then it's always easier when you're doing integration or differentiation just to change that to x squared minus 3x plus 4 to the power of a half. Now, integrating that, I'm going to get this function, and the power is going to go up by 1. So it's this function and this power, which is going to go up by 1. So I'll need to do a half plus 1, and that'll give me x squared minus 3x plus 4 to the power of 1 and a half, to the power of 3 over 2. And then what you do is just differentiate this and see if it does take you back to the question or whether some adjustment is going to be necessary with a constant. Now, if I differentiate that, I'll get 3 over 2 times by x squared minus 3x plus 4. The power goes down 1 to a half. Using the chain rule, I differentiate the x squared minus 3x plus 4 and get 2x minus 3. Tidying that up and rearranging things gives me 3 over 2 into 2x minus 3 times by the square root of x squared minus 3x plus 4. Now, compare this with what I wanted. It's exactly the same, except for the constant on the front. I need to get rid of the 3 over 2, and the way to do that is to multiply by the same fraction, but upside down. So rather than having this as the integral, I multiply this integral by 2 over 3. And that'll give me y equals 2 thirds times by x squared minus 3x plus 4 to the 3 over 2. And when I differentiate this, I'll get that, but I will also get 2 over 3. And the 2 thirds times by the 3 over 2 cancel with each other, leaving me with what I want. OK, example 6. Find the integral of 3 sine x times by cos to the 5x. Again, what you need to notice on this question is that you have some function, cos x, to the power of 5, and if I differentiate the function cos x, I get sin x. So it does have this form. And as you can see, there's a constant on the front. But we'll worry about that as we do the question. OK, have a go at this one. Pause the video and come back to me when you're ready. 
Okay, let's have a look. Well, we try y equals cos to the power of 6x, or cos x to the power of 6. And if I differentiate that, first of all, I differentiate the power of 6, so I'll get 6 cos to the power of 5x, then I differentiate the cos, and I get minus sine x. So that'll give me minus 6 sine x times by cos to the 5x. Now, I'll compare that with what I was hoping I would get. The sine x is fine, the cos to the 5x is fine. It's only the constant that needs to be adjusted. And the question you're asking yourself is, well, I've got minus 6, but I wanted to have 3. How can I get from minus 6 to 3? Well, I need to multiply by minus a half. So rather than this being the integral, I'll need to multiply this integral by minus a half. And that'll give me y equals minus a half cos to the 6x. Now, slightly different. Questions involving exponentials. I've got a slightly different idea on the go here. But the significant thing is that you can still use the chain rule to solve them. You've got a function here, the exponential function, e to the 4x cubed. And if I differentiate e, it just stays as e. If I differentiate the x cubed, I get x squared. So aside from a constant on the front here, I've got a function to a function. Um, when I differentiate e, I'll get e. When I differentiate the 4x cubed, I will get x squared. OK, I think I'll let you have a go at working your way through this yourself. So pause the video, see if you can make sense of what's going on, and then come back to me when you're ready. OK, let's have a look at this. Now, what we try is y equals e to the 4x cubed. And the reason why we try that is when we differentiate e to the 4x cubed, we'll get e to the 4x cubed. And we'll also get 12x squared, which is very nearly what I want. So differentiating that, I get e to the 4x cubed times by 12x squared, which simplifies to 12x squared e to the 4x cubed. Now, as before, what I would do is look at what you've got and look at what you want. The x squared is fine, the e to the 4x cubed is fine, it's only the constant that's a problem. We've got 12 and we want 5. So if I divide by 12 and times by 5, then I'll get what I want. So rather than having this as the integral, I need to times this integral by 5 twelfths. And then I'll divide by 12, multiply by 5, and all will be well. And if I differentiate this, then I do get that for the answer. OK, that gets us to the end of this lesson. If you've got the textbook, then turn to page 155 and have a go at exercise 7D. Thank you very much for listening. And cheerio.